Oh, what's up guys? Welcome to The Collision. Daniel here and the Rings of Power, the new prequel series, the much anticipated, much discussed, somewhat controversial uh, prequel Lord of the Rings series on Amazon Prime is releasing its first episodes this week. So let's talk about it. So The Rings of Power, this is one of the most kind of talked about, anticipated shows. Again, since they announced this thing like years ago when they bought the rights and then what are they going to do with this? And uh, there's just been a lot of discussion, some of it, uh, you know, nice and friendly uh, excitement and uh, con you know, concerns and some of it just sort of, you know, venom and uh, anger and, and all that stuff. But kind of in the middle of all that is... There is the show uh, to kind of see for our, ourselves. And I had the opportunity to go and actually see this, uh, the first two episodes of this uh, a few days early in a, a special fan screening that I got tickets for, so I feel pretty special about that. Uh, but I got to see this sort of in, in a big uh, movie theater. So if you've, if you've uh, followed The Collision for a while, uh, this isn't necessarily like a, a, a typical review or usually we kind of break down content and themes and kind of do a bunch of stuff. Uh, I thought, hey, this is just the first two episodes. Maybe when the whole season's done, we'll do like a, a more typical kind of review and break down all this stuff. But I thought I would just sort of talk about this, sort of let you guys know what I thought about it. Maybe kind of prepare you if you're sort of trying to decide whether you should watch it or uh, kind of what maybe age appropriate uh, this show is. But kind of the, the the short version is that I really loved the first two episodes of this. Uh, kind of the marketing for this has been um, a lot of people have talked about it. it I've been more optimistic going into to this uh, show than it seems like a lot of people are. Uh, but I'll admit the marketing kind of has been a bit iffy, a bit spotty, uh, just not really sure. But the, I can say, having seen the first two episodes, that the the marketing, the trailers that they've released for for this show really don't do it justice at all. Uh, they, they don't give like a, 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 a true sense of like the scope and the tone and and, and all this stuff. And at least for two episodes. Um, this show is is really really good, and again, if you if you guys know me, if you guys have followed the collision uh, for uh, very long, uh, you know that I am I got a bit a slight uh, uh, Tolkien addiction. Uh, his his the the man and his writings uh, just mean a lot to me. I, I read the books, the Lord of the Rings books every year. I've I've done deep dive into his Legendarium and you know the Silmarillion and you know history of Middle Earth. So I've done it all. Uh, you know I I know a lot of the lore. I think kind of like a lot of um, are maybe unlike a lot of sort of uh, people, you know, my people, the, the, the real Tolkien fanatics, I haven't been super concerned about the fact that, like, you know, changing the details of the lore and the time compression and, you know, they're kind of taking like thousands of years of history and squishing it in all at once. And I kind of accept that that's inevitable. It's, you know, even this, the Silmarillion book was like almost unpublishable uh, at the time because it was just dense and it was uh, a lot for people to take. So obviously like, trying to make a wide release uh, accessible show, uh, they were going to do that. But kind of my one uh, big concern for, for this uh, show is just that they capture what I kind of call like the spirit of Tolkien. Uh, I know the details are going to change a bit and this character that wasn't alive is going to be alive and this character who said this is not going to say this and I know all that stuff is uh, inevitable. I just wanted them to capture sort of that the, the spirit like the tone the feeling I get when I uh, when I visit uh, Middle Earth and I can say again I've only seen the first two episodes uh, but that they they do they capture that spirit kind of all across the board from like the uh, from like the themes that are that are in here the the, the dialogue the uh, the imagery this whole thing just feels like a total uh, love letter to to, to, to Tolkien and to his world. And obviously there's still room people are gonna disagree with some of the creative choices that uh, the showrunners or the directors or the actors make. Uh, but I think having seen the, these episodes, I think it, you can't say that these people don't love Tolkien or don't kind of understand Tolkien. Uh, they're definitely kind of doing all they can to sort of honor him and honor the world uh, that he that he established, even if they're kind of inserting their own uh, elements into it. So I'm just gonna touch on a couple of different elements of the show, gonna no spoilers there's anything I don't want to um, you know ruin the show for for anyone uh, to watch visually uh, the this the rings of power is phenomenal and I guess this is they were saying the most expensive television show in the history of television so you expect it if you know it better look good or some people are uh, are gonna get fired from Amazon uh, but it does and I, I don't think it's you know, I don't think it's like hyperbolic to say that like this might be like this the best looking uh, television show 
ever made. Like th this thing looks phenomenal. Again, I'm I'm curious to see. I, I saw it in like a big, uh, you know, the, the biggest movie theater I could possibly see it in. Uh, so I'm I'm curious uh, when I watch it again, like on a on a smaller screen, uh, how much that uh, translates to kind of the, the scope and stuff. But but from my experience of it, like this thing looks like it looks like a movie. It looks you could put this up against like the the Peter Jackson uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy. I think this looks probably better than most of the, like the blockbuster movies that I've seen uh, this year. Just the vast scope of this thing, visually, uh, just looks incredible. Uh, the acting, I think the acting is great across the board. Uh, they all do a great uh, job. Uh, Morfred Clark as Gladriel. Uh, I know there's been discussion uh, kind of about about her character and like she's sort of been somewhat controversial. Uh, you know, we sort of know like the Kate Blanchett version from the, the movies and she's sort of this wise sage uh, kind of queen of, of Lorien and you know, she's just very, you know, she's not like a, an action hero. Uh, so sort of this version, the younger Galadriel is an action hero. She is kind of this warrior elf. And I, I know people have been, uh, it, that's been kind of a point of uh, contention. I've been kind of down with the, from the start with sort of having this warrior uh, elf version. I think that is actually consistent with, you know, it's kind of like, you know, Yoda in Star Wars was a wise sage Jedi at 900 years old. Doesn't mean he was that same character at 100 years old. Uh, so I think it is consistent even in the in the movies and the book. It's sort of Galadriel's like main test is to, you know, to resist the ring and not just sort of take over the world and be a queen. Like she's always had that fiery uh, spirit. Uh, but kind of my concern for her was like, I'm fine with the, them making her like a, a warrior and like a general. Uh, as long as they don't lose some of that, like she still is this old, uh, kind of one of the older elves and sort of this wise character and, uh, you know, very kind of, you know, has a lot of grace and elegance to her character. And at least to me, I think they kept, they, they do have that balance. She, she can, you know, fight an ice troll with a sword and, and be a, a warrior, uh, but she is also just sort of wise, uh, kind of wise character. You can definitely see like, the, the the character arc and like the hints of sort of who she will eventually uh, become, even if she's not like, quite uh, there yet. And really, all the other actors in this are great. They're, they're almost all unknowns. Uh, the Elrond uh, actor wasn't really featured much in, like, the, in the trailers, which worried me a bit, uh, but I think he's great. He's All the characters are likable. Uh, there's a lot of this, an, an ensemble cast. They haven't even introduced all the characters, uh, but really none of the, there's no like weak spots in there as far as like kind of going back, even if some of the storylines maybe are a little bit more interesting uh, than others. And I, I will say that as far as like the kind of like the storyline, like this thing, there's a lot going on in this uh, show, uh, in, in these episodes. Like they haven't even introduced all the characters after like two hours of, of television. And I've seen like some other like early uh, feedback and uh, responses to this and uh, people criticizing it like for some of the pacing and saying that this, the pacing is kind of sporadic or it's slow. And, and I definitely see, I definitely understand those concerns. Like there is a lot, uh, it, a, there's a lot of sort of setting the game pieces uh, and kind of, you know, not at all rushed yet to to get into like the main action or the plot or sort of what's going to happen it's kind of this establishing middle earth like this is the world we're back into these are the characters this is sort of where their their tensions are and and i'm assuming as we get further into the season we're going to get more you know of like the actual like plot and things will start moving forward uh, maybe a little uh, quicker i don't think it's boring at all i guess like, things are happening at all uh times so it's not like it's like a super slow uh, but it, it is taking its time so some some people you might find it slow. Maybe that will be an, an, an issue uh, for you. At least for me, if you kind of think of this as like a, a fifty hour uh, story that they're telling throughout like these five uh, seasons, I think we're still kind of in like the Bilbo's one hundred and eleventh, uh, you know, birthday party part of the Lord of the Rings. So like, you know, it it is sort of establishing stuff and kind of get, getting you excited. And, and I do think like the. There is sort of like about four different kind of parallel stories that it, you know, none of them really like link up yet, and you know eventually they uh, will. I think most of them are, are really interesting. They're sort of the uh, what they've kind of advertised a lot, like this like romance between like a, an elf and a human, which in itself, if you know the lore, is controversial uh, to to even hint at, uh, and even the show kind of acknowledges that. I'm still not sold on it. That was definitely the weakest of the of the sort of the different storylines and the one that I, you know, when it cut to that, I was like, okay, I, I'm enjoying it, but I kind of want to get back to the Harfoots who are awesome or get back to the dwarves, uh, which is this uh, in, incredible when you kind of get into there. So I do think, it, it, right, at least right now, it's sort of like the weakest uh, link uh, of the stories. But really, again, overall, I was super uh, pleased with this. I don't know if the fact that I'm like a, just a super Lord of the Rings Tolkien nerd, if that biases me like, 
to like it more easily or if it makes me more cynical and like, you know, I hold Tolkien as like sacred, so I don't want them to, to mess with it. Uh, I, I would say as far as it's like, uh, again, I, I saw this with my wife. Uh, I have two seven-year-old uh, twin boys. It's as far as like themes and like, this is a very wholesome, very optimistic, very much true to, to Tolkien, kind of his spirit where, you know, characters are saying very much about like, you know, the light and sort of this very even spiritual as far as, uh, you know, kind of destiny and like providence and some of that, but also true to, to Tolkien, it is dark. Uh, Tolkien's stories are dark. The ring rapes were dark. The, you know, even like the, the barrel rights and stuff from the books or some dark stuff going on. Uh, this show, especially the second episode is, is, you know, almost like a horror tone in some parts. Like the orc is scary. Uh, there's, there's, there is like a little uh, violence. I'm not sure. I, I, I think I'm, I'll probably still uh, try and let my boys watch it. They've seen the movies. We'll kind of see if uh, how they do. Uh, but it is, if you have like real young kids. Maybe check it out first. Like nothing like it's not it's like a bunch of blur. There's no sexuality. There's no language. None of that kind of content. Uh, but it is. It is a, a, a little frightening if you have very young uh, viewers. But overall, I I could not be more uh, pleased with this. There are nitpicks and things that uh, that I could kind of call out to, or things I hope they they fix as they go on in this in this show. But I was just sort of hoping, hey. I want enough to sort of be able to to relax, take a deep breath, and know, okay, this is the Middle Earth that I love. This is sort of the, the spirit of Tolkien that I was hoping for. Uh, there's nothing that's just going to kind of totally turn me off, like like something like the Wheel of Time show did earlier uh, this year that just sort of you know disappointed me. So I'm excited for this show. I'm definitely uh, fully on board with this. This is this is the show I was hoping for, and, and not the show I dreaded. But hey, it was, if you guys haven't seen it yet, or if, once you guys do watch it. Come back, and I'd love to talk about it. And there's nothing I like doing more than talk about Lord of the Rings. Uh, and I think this show will be one, whether you really like it or kind of like it or not sure, or you just hate it. Uh, there's, regardless of that, there's going to be a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, so let's do that. So jump in the comments. Let's have a conversation uh, about that. But I want to thank you guys for watching. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. Um, like I said, maybe we'll do a, a full season uh, review uh, of this. But we got other movies and stuff uh, coming on. Coming up, we'll be doing reviews and live streams. We'd we'll love to have you be a part of that. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys, uh, and stay safe.